BTEC Applied Science Unit 1, Wave Basics. Bit of revision of GCSE stuff, really fundamental stuff you need to know about waves. Hopefully you already do, got to cover it though. So there's a wave traveling along from left to right. The speed of a wave, how fast the wave travels, meters per second, how many meters it travels every second. The speed of sound in air, is about 330 meters per second yeah in a second it travels 330 meters the speed of electromagnetic waves em waves in a vacuum is three times 10 to the 8 meters per second three times 10 to the 8 that's three and eight zeros that's 300 million meters per second that's 300,000 kilometers per second and that's light, that's radio, that's microwaves. I say in a vacuum, it's also in air. It travels at about that speed in air as well. So do that question, piece of cake, pause the video. And the answer is in three, two, one. There you go, 1,650 meters. Hopefully you can see why. Uh, the number of waves that pass a point every second is the frequency. So here's some water waves traveling along. How many waves go under the bridge every second? That's the frequency. And that's little f, and that's measured in hertz, which is capital H, little z. So the frequency is measured in hertz, the number of waves that pass a point every second. Uh, this clarinet is playing a note. Uh, probably a bit lower than that 440 hertz that is uh, radio tube uses radio waves to carry their signal uh, 91 mega hertz 91 million hertz 91 times 10 to the 6 hertz uh, waves travel through a medium uh, and what happens in the medium for example if it's water waves then the particles of water on the surface of the wave will oscillate. They will vibrate. They will go up and down. Yes. So the particles in the medium oscillate. And we say that the frequency is actually the number of times a particle oscillates every second. If it's a high frequency, then the particles will go up and down very quickly. OK, so that's another definition of the frequency. It is the number of times a particle oscillates every second. One important point is that the water doesn't go anywhere. The water doesn't travel from left to right. What is happening is that the wave is traveling through the water uh, and you can imagine the water particles just go up and down. Imagine it was like a little duck sat on the water and the little duck would be bobbing up and down. Yeah, the duck wouldn't be going from left to right. Uh, maybe if it had a surfboard, it might. But no, the, the water doesn't go anywhere. The particles just oscillate, in this case, vertically. Now, the time it takes a particle to oscillate is the periodic time. So the periodic time, capital T, measured in seconds, and that's the time for one oscillation. So the smaller the periodic time, then the bigger the frequency. The less time it takes to go up and down, then the more times it will oscillate every second. Okay, the frequency is also the number of times a particle oscillates every second. And so I give you this equation here. The frequency is one over the period, yes? If the period is big, then the frequency is low. If the period is small, then the frequency is high. So F equals one over T. If the period was 0 0.1, then the frequency is one divided by 0 0.1, which is 10 Hertz. First of several equations, F equals one over T. Electromagnetic waves light and radio and ultraviolet and x-rays they can travel through a vacuum they don't need a medium they don't need particles to oscillate what actually oscillates is electric and magnetic fields 
Yeah, because they can be in a vacuum. Electric and magnetic fields oscillate. And that's why it's called an electromagnetic wave. But it can travel through a vacuum, doesn't need a medium. There are no particles oscillating. Now, these two particles, look at these red particles, look at the animation. They are oscillating together. They are going up and down. They're down and then they go up and then they go down and they are doing it together. And we say that they are in phase. And the distance between particles that oscillate in phase is a wavelength. And that is the definition of a wavelength. Yes, it's the distance between adjacent particles. Adjacent means next to each other. The distance between adjacent particles that oscillate in phase is the wavelength. And for wavelength, we use this symbol here, which is a Greek letter lambda. Yes, lambda. There you go. It looks like that. OK, and that represents the wavelength. The distance between adjacent particles that oscillate in phase. Remember that. Now, the two red particles are in phase and they are a wavelength apart. Now, notice the green particle is doing the opposite. When the red ones go up, the green one is down. When the red ones go down, the green one goes up. And we say that the green particle is in antiphase with the red particles. It's doing the opposite. That's antiphase. This will be important later on when we look at interference, when waves interfere. We need to understand what in phase and in antiphase means when we do interference. Now, there's my particle oscillating. If the wave wasn't there, then the water would just be here. That would be the level of the water. So what's happening to the particle is it is being displaced. Yes, it's being put out of position. It is being displaced. And this is a graph or this shows us how the displacement of the particle changes. So you've got a big displacement, positive displacement, and then it's a big negative displacement. And then it comes up, oh, displacement is zero. Oh, now it's a big positive displacement. Yeah, this is displacement of the particle. A graph of displacement against time is looking like that. This is displacement of the particle against time. And looking at this graph, from there to there is the period, T. A big mistake students will make is they will say that's the wavelength. It's not the wavelength. Why not? Because this graph is against time. This is against time. So whatever that is, it is a period of time. And it is the time for the particle to oscillate. Yeah, it is the periodic time. This is something that you need to be careful with. There are two graphs, two very different graphs. Is the graph, is it against time or is it against distance? If the graph is against time, then from there to there is the t periodic time, it's capital T. If it's against distance, then from there to there is the wavelength, lambda. So be careful. Now, the maximum displacement, and this is the same on both graphs, the maximum displacement is the amplitude, and that's capital A, and that's measured in meters, and that is the amplitude. The maximum displacement, so it's like from the, the top of the graph to the center of oscillation, from the middle, is the amplitude. Two types of wave, transverse and longitudinal. You should know this from GCSE. Uh, looking at this wave here, this wave is traveling in that direction there. The particle is oscillating at right angles to that direction. OK, now that means it's a transverse wave. If the oscillations are perpendicular at right angles to the direction the wave is traveling in, that's what a transverse wave is. The oscillations are perpendicular 
to the direction the wave is traveling in. For example, you can make transverse waves with a slinky. Uh, water waves are transverse. Waves on a string are transverse. All electromagnetic waves are transverse. So if you like, most waves are transverse. The oscillations are at right angles to, di to the direction the wave is traveling in. Now, longitudinal waves, the only one that we really need to know is sound. And what's happening in sound is that you can imagine over here, maybe that's like a loud speaker there, and that's creating a sound, something vibrating, and it's pushing the air molecules. And you see these regions where the air molecules have been squished together. Yes, that's called a, a compression, where the air molecules are close together. So you've got high pressure, high air pressure, and these travel as waves through the air. Now, the, the particles, notice, look at one of these little red things here. These particles don't go anywhere. They just oscillate, but they are oscillating parallel to the direction that the wave is traveling in. And that is a longitudinal wave. The oscillations are parallel to the direction the wave is traveling in. We can make uh, longitudinal waves with slinky as well. But apart from that, the only one that you need to know is sound. Sound is a longitudinal wave. The oscillations are parallel. Remember, transverse, perpendicular, uh, longitudinal, parallel. Here's a question for you to have a go at. Pause the video, uh, pen and paper, and I'll show you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. There you go. What is the amplitude of this wave? Well, the amplitude is the maximum displacement so the amplitude is that displacement there, so it's five millimeters. Yeah, notice millimeters there, little m meters. Uh, what is the periodic time of an oscillation? Well, this graph is against time. So the periodic time is the time for one oscillation. So from there to there is 40 milliseconds, little m s milliseconds. That little m is not a typo, yeah, 40 milliseconds. Uh, what is the frequency? Well, I gave you an equation. Frequency is 1 over the period, so it's 1 over 40 times 10 to the minus 3. So there you go. Hopefully you, you know how to put that into your calculator, 40 times 10 to the minus 3. Don't be messing about with 0.04, uh, 25 hertz if you do it properly, is the frequency. What is a transverse wave? The oscillations are perpendicular to the direction the wave is traveling in. Learn that. What is a longitudinal wave? The oscillations are parallel to the direction the wave is traveling in. Get it learned.